In an effort to see how much punishment one can handle, I've been going through and watching every episode of The Crapolite as they hit Disney+. Plus. Today we're up to episode 7. Truth. Secrets are revealed. Questions answered. But what exactly is brought to the table? What do we find out? Perhaps it's why May and Osha have decided to keep the same hairstyle since they were children. Or perhaps it addresses the reason why Kathleen Kennedy is still making any decisions when it comes to Star Wars. And maybe, just maybe, we will learn what the power of one, the power of two, the power of many actually means. All these questions and more will not be answered on The Acolyte. Let's begin. Before I dive in, I should let you know this is going to be a spoiler-filled roast of the episode. Uh, it's for fun, okay? I'm not, like, really losing any sleep over another crappy Star Wars property put out by Disney. It's died long ago. I was never really, like, a massive Star Wars fan. I've enjoyed some of the stuff, I've hated most of it, and I've tolerated a few. But people like the commentary, people like me suffering through this thing, even though there's way better offerings available on a myriad of platforms. With that out of the way, Subscribe to the channel if you dare, like the video, and let's begin. We open on Brendock, 16 years earlier. Master Soul is seen collecting a sick batch of weed for the Great Harvest. Trinity and Budget Chewbacca are scanning the area for silver doubloons. They've been collecting them. You gotta get them all. You gotta catch them all. I don't actually know what they're doing. They're, they're, I guess they're, they're searching for, for spice. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're searching for force radiation. Excuse <laughs> Skew. They're actually here in search of a great virgence, which is a mass of force collected together. And with that great power comes great responsibility. Well, not, no, with that great power comes the ability to create new life. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. no cap. They decide in their infinite wisdom to split up. That way they can cover more ground. This always pans out for the heroes when they split up. Nothing ever goes wrong. Soul discovers T and Tamara's play place. Sister, sister. He witnesses them do their patty cake ring around the forcey dance just before female Darth Maul interrupts. Soul attempts to reach the rest of his team. No time to wait around. He's going to follow them. Thinking fast with Jedi knowledge on his side, he attempts to break into the compound by just pushing the little digital tablet interface they have out front. Alas... His crafty sense did not work, and instead he's going to scale the old-fashioned way. He witnesses a force-pushing session. Remember, they don't call it the force. They call it uh, the thread or the string or some Joanne Fabrics equivalent. I can't remember what it's called. And really, this entire episode is nothing more than a greatest hits collection of a previous episode. The worst episode of the season, as a matter of fact. We get to relive, through the eyes of different characters, events that we've already seen told terribly the first time around, and now we get to relive this hellish nightmare. Sol gets back to his team, explains how there's a witch in Coven here, and they have a couple of girls they're planning on preparing a ceremony for. He is troubled by this. He's worried for their well-being. They're in pursuit, heading through a hallway that genuinely looks like they're in a queue to go on a ride at Walt Disney World. Oh, I can't wait for this new Star Wars ride to open up. Not much longer now. Mother Witch enters young Torben's mind. And she's kind of being a bit sexual about it, caressing his chest, whispering sweet nothings into his ear. And now this is the only way I can achieve climax. Torben ends up giving in to Agatha all along, and she releases him. And probably not in the way he was hoping she would. She's interrupted by her stupid bratty kid who wants to go with the Jedi. The next morning, we see Torben in deep meditation, probably trying to hack back into that Only Force account. Alas, he fails. It's testing time! And yes, Trinity, you are experiencing deja vu. Because we've all seen this already! They start talking about Ascension, what it means to the witches, and how Osha and May are definitely a big part of this. Soul's not an idiot in this instance, and he understands that May threw the test. But they don't have time to dwell on it, they're gonna test Osha next. And she passes with flying colors. Unfortunately, it was all for naught. Because the Jedi Council has determined it's bad to separate these two girls. And I agree. I think that that's just this disgusting thing to do. Especially when you barely know these people. What, what, what the hell's going on here? Master Squid Games is pissed though. 
after doing some further testing, they determined these girls aren't just identical twins looks wise, even though they are not identical twins look wise, they're played by two completely different actresses. They are also chemically identical. Their DNA is the same. Their midichlorian count, they don't mention that, but they do say they're symbiotes. Their symbiotes are the same. Clearly this means they were created by the virgins. Torben is super jazzed about this. This means he can get off this God's forsaken planet, head back home as long as he can grab the girls and prove it. So he takes off in a speeder. <laughs> this kid's incorrigible. <laughs> Agatha all along talks to the other witches about Osha's determination to leave. Meanwhile, Darth Mom and May have other plans. They have decided they're gonna stop this from happening by any means necessary. Keep in mind, we are re-watching 20 to 30% of this episode over again. What a treat. How fun. <sighs> May once again throws the Bed Bath & Beyond Star Wars candelabra to the ground and the place goes up in flame. This time, thankfully, we do get an explanation as to how this huge fire actually happened. There's no way this thing took off after hitting stone walls and a stone floor. I mean, the whole place is made out of freaking rock and concrete and yeah, no, that's what happened. That's how it, that's how it started. The fire took off like a bat out of hell after hitting the fucking ground that's made of stone. Okay, I don't know what the fuck just happened here. Agatha turns into some black magic creature, like she's Credence from the Fantastic Beast movies, flying around like some CG apparition. Sol, being a competent Jedi Master, gets scared and stabs her, killing her on the spot. Before she dies, with the lightsaber still sticking in her, she is able to utter a couple sentences very clearly. I was only trying to help my daughter, you stupid fucking idiot. The power of one, the power of two, the power of many. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, 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 boom. Good night, sweet princess. It's been a long day without you, my friend. Here's a pro tip for further witches that decide to turn into scary smoke monsters from Lost. Maybe before doing so, you explain what you're about to do to the person that may or may not stab you in the face with a magical sword. Maybe say, hey, I'm about to do something pretty crazy, but I don't mean you any harm. Just helping my daughter out. I'm releasing her from her whatever enchanted spell or something. Be cool. Be calm. Jedi on. Lady Maul springs into action, furious about what happened. Run! Belting out this horrifically strong, powerful primal scream that would make even the horniest man flaccid. She turns to Ash as well and enters the body of old man Chewbacca. It's a 1v2 with budget Chewbacca kicking the shit out of Soul and the little Padawan kid. Until Master Squid Game yells, Trinity, help! And just like that, she springs into action. Force pulling that shit out of the hairy beast. All these witches in the corner that are doing this chant to keep the, I guess, magic intact. All the girls at the party, look at that body, shaking that thing like you never did see. Got a nice package, all right. Guess I'm gonna have to party too. Ah! And they all, I guess, climax at the same time and pass out. Soul takes off to save the twins, ends up right in the midst of a trolley problem. Two girls, one bridge. The thing is broken in the middle, it's about to collapse, and unfortunately, he only has enough force in the tank stored up to hold one of them afloat. This is essentially the ending of The Good Son with Macaulay Culkin. You remember, you remember that chestnut? It's the same, it's the same thing. And he does the same thing, he saves the good girl, letting May drop to her supposed death, but she does end up living. We, we find that out. 16 years later, we find that out. Osha, as she always does in this show, wakes up from a bad nightmare. And these Jedi don't even have a goddamn juice box for her? Come on! She asks them what happened. Squid Games tells the truth. He said May started a fire, and that's how it ends. I don't know if that was supposed to be this big aha moment, like he lied to her. He didn't lie to her. May did start a fire. Obviously, he's keeping from her that he's the one that couldn't save her because he could only 
pick up one and he really did nothing wrong. I don't, I don't know what he was supposed to do here. I guess get good, be stronger with the force. This episode, just like all Star Wars shows and movies, ends with a pop song. <laughs> it has a little bit of a rap flow to it. I didn't mind it. I listened to the whole song because I was still taking notes on the, the this amazing episode. And it, it struck me that this was actually a song created for the show. Because at one point, there's background singers saying, The Power of Two. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. The Power of Two. Yeah. Uh. Uh, yeah, the power of many. Uh, yeah. And the female that's singing, it's like, These girls were alone, and they had force on their side, and then the Jedi will ride, and then the Jedi will ride, and... The power of two. <laughs> I'm just making this. Is not, <laughs> the song's nothing like that. <laughs> but it's awesome. Okay, that's the episode. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's shit. But this whole series is a complete waste of time, which I'm part of. I'm on the ride. Because, of course, I'm on the ride for you. I do this for you. So please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, Adam Does Movies. Believe it or not, it's not a Star Wars channel. I talk about a lot of movies every week that come out good, bad, and otherwise. Tomorrow we get new releases, so I'll have a review for Long Legs. I'll have a review for maybe Fly Me to the Moon with Scarlett Johansson. I'll have a review for Potluck. Because in my last live stream, people requested, they demanded, they paid me to watch this new comedy that's on Amazon Prime. So I'm gonna be watching Potluck. I think that's what it's called. It doesn't matter. You'll see it show up if you subscribe here. And hopefully I see you next time. All right, may the force get a little less forced in the future. Take care.